Hi, I'm Tara. And I'm Jill. We're from livingonadime.com. Today we are going to talk about how to get organized. This is, this is our number two most popular article on our website of all time. People just cannot seem to grasp how to get organized because it seems like this nebulous idea out there that some moms that are type A can get, but other moms it's just hopeless. Well, there is a happy medium. And um, so today we're gonna talk about how to get organized. Um, we've got 10 tips, so we're gonna make 10 different videos on this. And we are starting with tip number one today, which is... Never stop picking up. <laughs> never, ever, ever. Never, ever stop picking up. You have to keep going all the time. As you walk from up. room to room to room. Yeah. If I'm walking to go to the bathroom, I walk, each room I walk through, I pick up as I go mm -hmm. along yeah. doing it. And grandma, mom's mom, one time said that her neighbor had an immaculate house and she asked her one time, how did you do that? And she said, I never leave a room without taking something mm -hmm. to put up in another room, which is a good tip and I never am able to keep up with that even, but it's a good idea to always keep in mind when you're headed downstairs take that thing that's sitting on the stairs with you as you go and put it where it belongs and don't just dump it put it on the shelf or in the cabinet where it belongs another thing too is when i'm waiting for things i pick up mm -hmm. for example if i put something in the microwave i'll take and put the silverware away in the drawer or i'll clean off a, a section of the cabinet or something like that uh, when i put the kids down if i tuck them into bed well, they're telling me yak, yak, yak. You know, they always stall when they go to bed and they want to talk to you then. So they're yakking at me, talking, talking, talking. And I'll be picking up odds and ends around their bedroom as they're talking to, to me for different things. The office, if I'm waiting for the computer to even kick in for something and I'm having to wait there, I will straighten around that computer. So you just keep, you know, constantly when use you're waiting the little, for things. Yeah, use the little mm -hmm. bits of time. Even just, you would be amazed at if you're watching a TV show, how much you can get done in the three to five minutes of just commercial. a commercial. Mm -hmm. And we both have chronic fatigue syndrome and I have fibromyalgia also. And there's a lot of days we are not well enough to <clears throat> pick up the house. But while we're watching HDTV, we <laughs> will, <laughs> uh, during every commercial, you can get the dishes done. You can get the dishwasher unloaded. You can get a laundry put a load of laundry put in, you can get a load of laundry moved from the washer to the dryer, you can get a load of laundry folded while you're watching TV. So just always find those little bits of time. We can't do a long stretch. We can't clean for an hour or two. It's just too yeah, wearing on too much. But we clean for five minutes and then rest in between. That's why we do the commercial on the TV thing. Another thing is you do a lot is when the kids are in the bathtub, clean the kitchen, the bathroom counter. Yeah and mm -hmm. pick up towels or do anything like that. Yeah. You do a lot of that. Yeah, I've had four little kids and my bathroom usually stays fairly clean because the only time I clean- You clean them a lot, don't you? The bathroom, <laughs> it seems, is when they're in the tub, which isn't true. I mean, I clean it, you know, two or, the kids clean it daily and then I clean it really good two times a week at least. But I do it while they're in the tub because for some reason kids always want you sitting there entertaining them even when they're older the little ones you have to be there but it's a good way to use that time up to get something done without wearing yourself out doing it so yeah and you don't have to think about it you don't have to make a schedule you don't have to fill out a big long form and say this is my thing that i have to get done if it's laying there pick it up and put it away you don't need to be told i have to pick this item up you should be able to just go in pick it up yeah. and put it away mm -hmm. another thing too that helps as far as the picking up is plan for the family to have different times during the day for example with you guys the kids before they could eat breakfast in the morning because the kids are hungry and they wanted to eat right away, but they, I, and I wasn't torturing you, no, did I? I would take and say, okay, <laughs> as soon as your bedroom's picked up and you're dressed, we'll have breakfast. You would not believe how fast they got that bedroom picked up wanting to eat compared to if I let them eat first and then they would just dawdle picking up the bedroom. So yeah. I said certain times, you pick up before you eat breakfast in the morning to go to school. The room's nice and clean. Then there would be other times before bed at night, you'd have to pick mm -hmm. up 
you know, the bedroom. So that when they get up in the morning, they really didn't have that much in the morning to actually pick up. And so maybe at, you know, what everybody's done watching a movie, say, okay, take 10 minutes, everybody pick up 20 items in the family room, yeah. depending on how dirty your family and room is. And another thing is, is get them in the habit of doing it. Exactly, Our yes. kids know before bed, we spend 10 to 15 minutes and we get everything picked up. Mm -hmm. You can set a timer for 10 minutes. You can do it however you want. For us, we say, you find all your stuff and pick it up. Or we say, find 10 pieces of trash and pick it up. And that makes it sound like our house is totally trashed, which at the moment, if you could see it, <laughs> it is. We've been sick for 10 days and it looks pretty trashed. But, <clears throat> but it's amazing just little bits of cough drop papers or tissue here or a piece of paper that was cut that fell on the floor. Just have the, my five-year-old, I say, find 10 pieces of trash and pick it up. And he does. With the teenagers, we have three teenagers, um, we say, okay, you can go to your friend's house or you can go to the movie, but you have to get all of your chores done and everything picked up first. Don't let them go until they do it. If they're late, that's their problem. Now you need to give them an hour, hour and a half's notice, but you know, don't spring it on them as they're walking out the door, but don't let them walk out the door until it's done and make that a habit that for our kids, the cat box has to be cleaned out before you're done. The vacuuming has to be done before you can go. So make it a habit and that will help. Um, Another thing too that I find a lot of people are doing, and I don't understand why, and that is they're making one child pick up everybody's dirty underwear from all the bedrooms. Oh, yeah, why? Or they make them pick up everybody else's no. trash, and you can to a certain extent. Sometimes everybody has to pick, pitch in, you know, mm -hmm. and pick up the dirty the papers and stuff, but don't make it a, a scheduled thing. You have to get everybody's towels that they've dumped in the bathroom. Each person needs to be responsible yeah. for their own self yeah. to pick up their own laundry, to pick up their own towels and their own trash <clears throat> in the family room. So they, our, yeah. the kids resent that. They start resenting it, get very angry, and then the chores become something they hate and despise mm -hmm. instead of just a pleasant habit. Well, it's never pleasant for yeah. kids, but you know, it's just instead of they it becoming a it habit, yeah, you know, that they know that's part of life. But if you make them do everybody else's stuff, you know, they get resentful. Another thing is I found it helps if you work together. Yeah. You know, everybody's in the kitchen. One's drying the dishes, mm -hmm. one's washing the dishes, one's clearing the table. You're all visiting and you're all talking. It's people don't talk anymore. I know they're all on their phones, but when you get them up doing the chores together like that, everybody's mm -hmm. visiting and interacting. I hear people say, we spend such and such bonding time with our kids at this hour on this day. Quality should, time is a sham. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. yeah, it is. <laughs> you should be bonding with your kids every moment you're around them, basically. And that means bonding in the sense that you're talking, you're visiting. It has, doesn't have to be a specific, let's all go camping together so we can bond with each other. You should be doing interacting during the day and that's the way to get them to interact yeah. too and get them off the phones or the computers yeah, and start interacting. Yeah, and they do when they're picking up have to be off the phones, Kindle, mm -hmm. computer, everything. Everybody is off TV of everything. TV turned off. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> to go back just a little bit, for the whole picking up thing, when our kids are about a year old is when we start having them do chores. And I know people are like, <gasps> what? But they can, they know and when they start walking, they can carry their little shirts and pants and underwear to the laundry room. And they can carry stuff to the trash can when they're that and they little. They love it too. They and, yeah, love and doing it. And they think it. it's cool. Mm -hmm. I say that, but then we did have quite a major mishap. Um, when my number, let's see, number three child, my third child was 18 months or two years old. I had set my wedding ring on the stairs because I was painting the outside of the house and I didn't want to walk in and and so I just sat on the stairs and my wedding ring disappeared afterwards and we couldn't find it. Mike had vacuumed and we thought he'd sucked it up, but we couldn't find it in the vacuum bag and it was just gone. My wedding ring was gone. We thought, what in the world? So about three or four days later, my, I think he was about two years old then, he said, mom, we were talking about losing my wedding ring. He said, oh yeah, I threw it in the trash. So <laughs> it can kind of backfire. The trash had already gone out for the week, so there was no way we could find it. 
So they really do <laughs> throwing away things in the trash. <laughs> yeah, so you got to be a little bit careful, but 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 they can start helping out when they're that young. Just don't be afraid to get them started. They don't have to be 10 years old to get started. Start them when they're really little. You know, 12, 18 months is a good age to get going. And one thing, too, when they're little, which <clears throat> drives Tar and Mike crazy when they have to listen to it, or my daughter and son and daughter-in-law, is we sing silly songs. We do make up silly games. Let's see who can get, you know, all these put in this section or pick up five mm -hmm. socks, you know, or pick up something, and you make it a game. Sometimes if you, when they're tiny, if you make games, yeah. Then they, they learn to end, chores aren't a drudgery. It's just more of a, this is the way life is. It's like you get up and get dressed every morning, you get up and do your chores every day, and it's not, you don't dread it. You don't get to be an adult and think, I have to do the dishes type thing. You yeah, know? it's just something you're used to doing. Mm -hmm. So that's our tip number one for getting organized is never ever stop picking up. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment below.